Glasgow Rangers are celebrating another Scottish Championship and we join in those festivities today. But two defeats for Manchester United this week mean that the Championship in England is far from settled. But also today we mingle with the stars at a special lunch in London and the link is they're all football daft. And you should have a pen and paper handy if you want to crack at some super prizes and our goal of the season competition. Good afternoon. Oh, good day, folks. Before we start, yes, start yes. Jeff, I have to ask you about a letter that arrived uh, in our office. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you have been voted one of the Thai people of the year. Well, my a... thanks to all the people in Thailand who voted for no, me. Then. No, it's not that. What Read is that, it, go on. <laughs> Uh, that you are among the final 25 nominations for the top tie wearer. <laughs> Me, a top. How did they know that I actually wore a tie, Saint? I mean, nobody has ever known that I actually wore a tie every show. Isn't that amazing? No, no, well, no, no. well done. But, but well, I look forward to a few free ties, chaps. <laughs> Thank you very much. Lovely, right. Lovely. Michael Aspel's won it. Oh, that is posh company. <laughs> well, the, the championship race in England is at boiling point, with Leeds now the favourites. Manchester United is still fighting, and Sheffield Wednesday, well, also win with a shout. Manchester United's two defeats this week, however, could prove very costly. Dennis Irwin's cross. Hughes going for the overhead! Great save by McClosko! West Ham on the break. Kevin Key. Stuart Slater to his left. Ian Bishop and Mike Small to his right. This is Stuart Slater. Palace is clear and straight to Brown. It's in! West Ham deserved the lucky break. Palace has got it back for Manchester United. Ran into Potts. It's Hughes, though. Space for Ryan Giggs. Is this the moment? Oh, good save by McCloskey. The critics have bemoaned the quality of this season's championship, but for sheer drama, there's been nothing like it for years. Manchester United's nerve has failed them at the worst possible moment. Ian Wone's goal for Nottingham Forest, beginning a nightmare Easter Monday at Old Trafford. Once again, United had to rely on leading scorer Brian McClare to revive their hopes, but this time, McClare's goal, his 24th of the season, was not going to be enough to save them. Forest couldn't beat United in the Rumbelows Cup, but they've inflicted serious damage on their title hopes with two league defeats in a month. Scott Gemmell's winning goal, signalling the start of what's been a miserable week for Mancunians of the red variety. The weight of expectation doesn't lie so heavily at Ellen Road. Leeds, in only their second season back in the first division, have tried to keep their title bid low-key. But Chris Fairclough's goal against Coventry coming an hour after news of United's failure against Forest, really lit the fires. At this critical stage, fate is just as important as football, and the linesman's error could play a big part in the title. A penalty wrongly awarded for handball, and Coventry's Lloyd McGrath wrongly sent off. Gary McAllister, the only man in this sorry incident who got it right. 2-0, and for Leeds, the real possibility of their first title since 1974. Just a week ago, one leading bookmaker had Sheffield Wednesday at 100-1 to 1 for the championship. I hope he hasn't given up his day job. The Owls are sitting in the wings, ready to pounce. Roland Nielsen on target against Norwich City on Monday. The Wednesday team, built by Ron Atkinson and improved by Trevor Francis, has had a marvellous season. The big prize may be beyond them, but when John Sheridan made it 2-0, he ensured that Wednesday should at least qualify for Europe, and if the big two do slip, who knows? Well, you can follow the next stage in the chase for the title tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock on ITV. There's extended highlights of Sheffield United against Leeds, followed by live coverage of Liverpool against Manchester United. And, Jimmy, I have to say, when you think about it, it's about six weeks ago, we never yeah. thought we'd be sitting here talking about United well, throwing the league away. You're quite right. And, effectively, it could even be over tomorrow after those exactly, two games. Exactly, because and if Leeds win in the morning and yeah, United lose at Anfield, right, it's, it's all over. over. It's amazing. I mean, both teams, to me, have never looked as though either of them have wanted it. They've been <laughs> saying to the other team, look, you take it. Uh, particularly in Manchester United's case, really, they've had enough chances to have got away from the situation and, 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 and allowed themselves a luxury 
luxury of, of getting beat at, say, West Ham mm -hmm. the other night and still have enough points in the bag, but it hasn't happened Well, here. we've always said and, that, that uh, the game's in hand were never points in hand. They and, never are, And that's, are that's the way it's worked out, because looking at the table now, they've caught up in games, and there you are, leads, leads a point on top. And, and a better goal average. That's going to be a key factor, I think, Jim, at the well, end of the day. Well, it's a great because, advantage to it? them. You know, it's like another point. And that's why you have to rule out Sheffield Wednesday, really, because they're going to have to really win both games, and even then, their, their goal average is not sufficient because you can't really see Leeds United or Manchester, for that matter, losing two games out of the last mm -hmm. two. They're going to win one each, I would think. Mm -hmm. uh, Leeds' home game, their last game of the season's against Norwich. And you really can't see Leeds United losing that game. Unless something happens, as happened well, in, in the previous weeks, where they've, I mean, they drew at home against well, West Ham. Uh, that's absolutely right. As I say, I mean, to me, Manchester United have thrown this away. I don't know for what reason. Um, it's just one of those things. But they should have been in this position now mm -hmm. of allowing themselves the luxury of losing a game, which they did do in the week, but still have enough in hand. Mm -hmm. It hasn't happened. The driving seat is firmly set there with Leeds United totally in control now. So, I mean, and I don't think yeah. you and I would have said that a few no, weeks ago. No, we wouldn't. Ago. And uh, so we're looking or forward to that. For that matter, <laughs> even Alan Wilkinson. Yeah, I know. Looking forward to that one tomorrow. Oh, a great right, double be great. header. Be great. Yeah, you working on it? Yes, I'll be there. Good man. Right. In the second division, Ipswich and Leicester are almost there, but the playoff spots are still in the balance, as are the relegation places. Here's Gabriel Clark. With the Premier League just a win away, it was just like old times at Ipswich on Tuesday night. A sellout 23,000 crowd, John Lyle walked out to the sort of reception last reserved for Bobby Robson. But after that, the Portman Road promotion party turned rather flat. Ipswich were edgy and short on ideas and failed to unhinge a Grimsby side defending for their second division survival. The second half brought more pressure but only more frustration. The closest Ipswich came to a breakthrough when Paul Futcher nearly diverted the ball into his own net. That was until the final minute when an Ipswich head finally got on the end of an Ipswich cross. But Jason Dezel's header came back off the post. The points should help Grimsby stay up. As for Ipswich, they can see the finishing line. At the moment, they just can't cross it. Very well defended, very well. We just needed a bit of luck in front of the goal and it didn't happen, but we still believe we're going to go up and we're going to go up as champions. It's Leicester City who looked the most likely to join them. Tommy Rice was the man for the job after Cambridge had controlled much of the early play. Wright struck from 25 yards just before half-time. And eight minutes after it, Wright's cross deceived the United defence and Phil G applied the finishing touch to Leicester's seventh win in the last eight and Cambridge's chances of automatic promotion. But John Beck's side will run till they drop to make sure they're in the playoffs. Leicester were on their heels for the last half hour after Steve Claridge had brought it back to 2-1. This afternoon, Leicester are taking around 10,000 fans to Charlton, who moved into the sixth and final playoff place after going behind at Port Vale. Brian Mills turning neatly on Dean Glover's free kick. Two minutes from time, though, Colin Walsh's free kick was only palmed away by Mark Grew and Charlton's co-manager Steve Griss on his sub showed his strikers how to do it with his first goal in three years. At Roker Park, Peter Davenport scored his first league goal in three months. It was worth waiting for. It was also good enough to win the Tees Weir Derby and probably good enough to spare Sunderland from the drop. But that sinking feeling is still with Newcastle United. A bomb scare delayed their kickoff at Derby, but after just three minutes, the drama turned into a crisis for Kevin Keegan. Kevin Brock had handled on the line, no hesitation from referee Brian Coddington, who followed FIFA rules to the letter. Brock saw red, and so did most of his teammates, but Newcastle were down to ten men. Paul Williams scored from the penalty spot, and with Newcastle rattled, Derby, who could still sneak into the top two, went for the jugular. 17 minutes in, and Paul Kitson pounced on some third-rate defending for his third goal since moving from Leicester. Things couldn't have got much worse for Kevin Keegan, but they did. Nine minutes later, Newcastle were reduced to nine men when Kevin Scott was sent off for his second bookable offence. By now, his manager was lost for words. Somehow, though, Newcastle's nine men managed to halve the arrears early in the second half. Kevin Sheedy's cross, David Kelly's header, and Gavin Peacock knocked in the rebound. 
but any hopes that they might be up to Mission Impossible disappeared in the space of another mad minute. First Gabbiadini flicked on and Craig Ramage made it 3-1. And then Liam O'Brien became the third Newcastle player to be sent off after saying something he shouldn't have to referee Coddington. It was all rather academic by the time Ramage trickled in his second. Keegan has since lodged an official complaint about the referee for failing to take the big match atmosphere into consideration. But it won't alter the results or the fact that Newcastle is suddenly back in the bottom three. Now that is amazing, Newcastle down there, Jim, and they play uh, Pompey today, which is amazing That's that Jimmy right. Smith gone up there uh, back to Newcastle. True. Could be the man that, that puts them down. Uh, I hate that players getting sent off like that because they muddy the bath for you when you <laughs> finish the game itself, <laughs> don't they? Then, but I mean that's unusual free getting off, isn't it? Terrible. Yeah. Things not going for Newcastle. No, and Jim Smith. When you think about, it, as you rightly say, and he could be the man to put the final nail in oh. virtually. Well, up at the top of the table, I yeah. mean, things are really hotting up there if we have a look at yeah. it. Ipswich, Leicester look to me, Jim, to be near enough there. I would, I would say so, Ian. Although yes, Leicester are right. at Charlton today, yeah, uh, and, and that, that is a tough game for them. Blackburn Rovers, a big story, of course, the fact that uh, they led the league. And again, like Manchester United, you thought, well, past the post. That's and look right. at them now, I mean, they're really struggling. They may got... not make the playoffs now. Oh. Now, um, talking about Charlton, yeah. you know. On, on what... I know, I <laughs> on know. On Thursday, Steve Grit, Alan Kirbyshler, like the yeah. management team, had a go at me about, we never mentioned them, and I saw it in the papers this morning as well. So, I mean, well, what are we going to we do? we did. We actually showed them beating Portsmouth the other week, but not they were enough. obviously in the Woolwich wine bar, those two, <laughs> weren't they? But, but here we are, lads, to show there's no hard feelings. Nice one. Couple of Saint and Greasy mugs. Curb, <laughs> Steve, they're yours. Kiss and make up. Well, more action now, and shortly we'll look at the scrap going on between Wickham and Colchester for a place in the Football League. But first, a defeat for the third division leaders on Tuesday night. Birmingham City in blue went to Deepdale looking for their sixth win in a row, but a win for Preston would all but seal their place in Division 3, and Lee Cartwright's shot was deflected past Kevin Dearden to give them an early lead. Not much the keeper could have done about that, but he won't have been too pleased about his parted Preston second. His punch fell straight to Mike Flynn, who made it 2-0. Two minutes into the second half, Birmingham rediscovered something like that fluent form that has taken them to the top, creating space down the right for Darren Rowbottom, whose cross was touched on by Simon Sturridge and then pounced on by Nigel Gleghorn. It threatened to come back, but that didn't quite materialise. Playing on plastic once a year is a lot different to playing on it every other week. And with the Birmingham defence slipping and sliding, Graham Shaw rounded Dearden for number three. It was everybody up for Terry Cooper after that. And Birmingham did manage to make it a frantic finish. Simon Sturridge pouncing on the ball after the Preston keeper had lost his bearings. He crossed for David Rennie to bring it back to 3-2. That was the final score, but Birmingham are still a point clear with the game in hand. In Division 4, Mansfield Town's chase for a place in the top three sparked into life just before half-time, when Phil Stance lobbed them ahead. But Halifax were level with one of the goals of the week early in the second half. 20 yards out and Ian Juriev cracks in the equaliser. Eight minutes later, Mansfield were back in front and Stand had got his second. Not the most orthodox overhead kick you'll see, but it ended up in the back of the net. Still, Mansfield couldn't hold on to the lead with 13 minutes remaining and the nerves starting to fray at Field Mill. Halifax carved out an opening down the right and Greg Abbott headed in their second equaliser. The five minutes later, Stant had the final words. Gary Ford released Steve Wilkinson. He got to the byline and Stant got his rather ample chest on the end of it. 3-2 to Mansfield and not for the first time this season. Their top scorer had answered their prayers. But it looks like it might take divine intervention to stop Burnley going up. On Wednesday they beat Cardiff 3-1 and got the second fastest goal of the season when Robbie Painter scored after just 16 seconds. Cardiff, who are in the playoff hunt themselves, recovered though and were level at half-time. Colin Griffith got down the right and Nathan Blake arrowed in their equaliser.
But Burnley wrapped it up early in the second half with two goals in the space of three minutes. First, Ian Meesham's cross was headed on by Mike Conroy and Andy Farrell put them 2-1 up. And the 12,500 crowd knew their side were back at the top when Conroy headed in from almost on the line. Burnley are now three points clear with two games in hand. As for who goes up to the fourth, it'll either be Wickham Wanderers, who've never been in the league, but have got a brand new stadium, an average attendance of 4,000, and ITV's Alan Parry on their board of directors. Or Colchester United, who were in the league up until two years ago and who are currently having to raise £80,000 to make sure their old ground at Layer Road is up to scratch if they get promotion. I think it means everything to the town, the players, the directors, the chairman, to get back in the Football League and get your league status back. Um, the conference hasn't been a bad experience, I don't think, you know, the lads have quite enjoyed the football, but there's nothing like playing in the Football League. In the fourth division, the third division, the second division, you can finish sixth in the table and still get promoted. I think the conference actually is the hardest league in all of England to win. Only the top team is successful ultimately. And what a pressure that is. One slip now by ourselves or Colchester and a season's work is down the drain. And in the last two years, the race to get out of the conference has gone to the last day. This year looks like being just the same. Wickham went into Easter level on points, but second on goal difference. They did their best to close that gap, beating Welling 4-0 and Bath 1-0. But Colchester didn't drop a points over the holiday period either, and on Wednesday they edged themselves further in front, while Wickham could only draw at Kettering. Colchester won 4-0 at Boston. With three games left, they're showing more of the championship form. Well, Parry could be buying a champagne. Yes. Well, I've got a £10 bet with our boy. Have you? Uh, yes, I'm going for Colchester, who oh. do have their problems. They've got a dodgy ground, but I think if they do go up, they'll find the money. And Wickham have got their problems. They've got the pitch and Alan Parry. <laughs> so, yes. so, you know, they're, they're not without Double their problems. Double header for them. Yeah, they're not without their problems either, are they? <laughs> well, in, in the third, the losers of Birmingham are going to go up, Jim, which is great because a, yeah. a city as big as Birmingham really well, needs it, the two it's, teams it's, to be doing well. You're quite right, and It's England's second city. They've got enormous potential to support Birmingham and, yes. and they've played good football this year, in yeah, fairness. Well done, they deserve to. He's, he's done a great job there. And Cooper. Little Burnley, who, who are Burnley. a soft spot for Burnley. I want to see yeah. them do well. well. They look as if they're up. Well, it was a, it was a regular visit for us, Ian. They That's were right. a first division side, a great first division side. That's right. And it's nice to see them on their way back. Lovely. It really is. OK, well, we'll take a break there. Still to come, our goal of the season competition, so get that pen and paper now. We've coverage of the Sunday Express Celebrity Football Lunch and we reflect on Rangers' successes in Scotland, so stay with us. If I see one walking down a street, I tend to beat a hasty retreat. I walk on by Whatever's in the back of any car I find a moss Too clever by far I walk on by No matter what it is Won't see me try To beat one, defeat one, disarm one I'll break down and cry I walk on by You don't mess Oh, with a moss. This vehicle is a symbol of the UPS promise for international shipments. It may be all you ever see. But remember, it's your access to our new package and freight services that span Europe. And to an air network that spans the world. UPS predictability. It means getting it there when you need it wherever you need it. Old iron! Any old iron, any old iron, any, any, any old iron. If rusty railings give you heart failings, your gates to the state don't hesitate. Grab yourself a brush, protect the gates rust. One coat is all you need, oh. It's got to be right with Hammerite on iron. Hammerite protects metal against rust because it has the barrier technology no weather can penetrate. It's got to be right with ammo, right on iron, on iron. Stick it on your drain pipe, all right. 
He was the world's funniest comedian. Now the Sunday Mirror reveals the real untold story of Benny Hill. His wealth, his women, his heartache. Plus George Graham's surprise verdict on soccer's league title chase. And a thousand and one ways to improve your sex life. Plus get your free packet of seeds. Buy the Sunday Mirror tomorrow. I was coming about the nanny position. Her plan to make this family her own. She seems terrific. What's the catch? One by one, she will charm them all. I don't know what we would have done without her. All of them, but Claire. I don't know what in this house. The hand that rocks the cradle. The world's ultimate challenge has arrived. Uh, now to Scotland and uh, viewers in the Scottish and Grampian regions next Tuesday night will be able to enjoy live coverage of Rangers' final home game of the season, the Championship Party, if you like, to take on hearts for so long, the league leaders themselves. I'll be there, Jim, with uh, Jerry McNee, the singing commentator, and oh, the show nice, is it? hosted by Jim White from 8 o'clock. <laughs> so it's four championships in a row now for the men from Ibrox. Clive Tisler reports. Had 19 minutes. And Gorham's clearance rather hanging on the wind, and here's a chance for Ali McCoy. She's going to walk it in. Oh, how he loves to score goals. Here's Vinicum. Underlining the strength of this Rangers squad now. Mikhailichenko. Gary Stevens arriving on the scene. Oh, what a beauty. Money never saw it. 2-0. Austra, Durant, McCoist, lovely turn, lovely goal. Oh, what a season he's having. His second of the day is his 35th of the season. It's fallen for Mikhailichenko and Samirin are done here. Muddy got a hand to it. Haustra, the fourth goal, the fourth successive title for Rangers, surely, and champions in style. Most players wait a footballing lifetime and never win a championship medal. Gary Stevens wins one nearly every year. Six in the last eight seasons, two with Everton, four in a row now with Rangers. A never-ending story of success that the men in the light blue shirts are rightly proud of. 44 games it was this year. I mean, that was uh, on paper at the start of the year. 44 games sounds an awful lot to have to play in a season. Um, before Christmas, we were playing two games every week all, all the way through to Christmas. And it, it was very difficult, you know, mentally more than anything else. You see, people say that it isn't difficult for Rangers, that the competition here to the Rangers in the Championship is token. Well, whether Rangers are the champions or not, sides up here tend to... the fire in the bellies for playing Rangers, you know, they prepare better. Um, but add to that the fact that we've been champions the last three years, um, sides really do want to do us, you know, they want to see us fall. Um, probably along, along with 50% of, of the Scottish population, you know, that's the way it is up here. The one saving grace for Rangers detractors has been the club's failure to win the Scottish Cup since 1981. In their last final three years ago, Stevens made the error that gifted Celtic's Joe Miller the winner. No Rangers player is keener to make 1992 an Ibrox double year. On the day, it always hurts, but um, I think there's a lot of water gone under the bridge since then, and. Um, I was forgiven by the, the fans. I think that's one thing that, uh, that helps you forget. Um, I still get uh, the odd snide comment walking along the street off Celtic fans. Um, but I've got a chance this year, along with the rest of us, to, to put the records right. Um, they've talked about it being a bit of a jinx competition, but we haven't really deserved to win it. Um, and this year, um, all due respect to Airdrie, we've got a better chance perhaps this year than, than we have um, you know, for a long while, and I'll be starting from scratch, really, because I've had a year off. I'm, I'm perhaps a different player as well. Um, In what sense? 
Well, I mean, a year on. I mean, you've got to develop. Better? I'd hope so, I'd hope so, but... Uh, and the older you get, I mean, the more you use your brain, perhaps, uh, a little more strong uh, mentally. Um, and, and perhaps I could deal with that, but I, I would never find that unless I get to play again. That's the thing. Being very successful, uh, ah, Harry, well up done, there, and Rangers, Jim, four in a row. Yeah, you can't argue with that. They're no. the outstanding team in Scotland. But they've got the Ant of St. Gravesy programme, haven't they? Well, because not so much at the programme to you, actually. To me, is it? <laughs> well, what? you had said something during the season about one of the players. Oh, it's Mark Haley. Just because I said Mark Haley can trap a ball further than I can kick it. Now, <laughs> that's my opinion, and I'm entitled to that. Yes, Now, but... Rangers are not entitled to get the ump over that because they were going to let Ali McCoy come down here. Well, we wanted they? Ali McCoy to come on yeah. and assure this week and do the whole bit about the Rangers yeah. and everything. But well, yeah. Rangers are the biggest club in Megaland. I mean, they should be above anything like that, really. Come on, Airdrie. <laughs> Support Airdrie next week. What, for the fire? Because yeah, the Rangers, of course, uh, can do the double. Which they can, that's right. You know, haven't done but for Airdrie a long will time. stand in their way, little Airdrie. Well, you think so? I've got, well, the, ump I've got <laughs> the ump to Rangers now. I mean, they, the, a club like that should be above all criticism, really. They so should you, be you, able you're, to run. seriously, you'll, you'll be then hoping that Hearts win because Hearts have to win the last three games. It'd be nice it's to see what Hearts Celtic do, yes. It'd be, be nice to see Hearts win, absolutely, and yeah. Airdrie. And get in the UEFA Cup. Absolutely. Okay, well, but you know, I'd have Divorce myself from everything he said. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're I, going up there on Tuesday. You've got to. And I'm I don't blame you. I'm, I'm not telling you where I am. <laughs> OK, <laughs> right. Now, this week at the Dorchester Hotel in London, the Sunday Express uh, hosted a celebrity lunch for stars who share a love of football. Now, among them was Jim Rosenthal, and he explains the common link. Throughout the season, the award-winning Sunday Express sports pages have included a special report. Celebrities have covered a match involving their favourite team. Manchester United's seizure is the big talking point. Well, you know, being a Manchester person, I was shocked and surprised and, and upset for the United fans. And, uh, well, it would be very sad if they lose the title now, won't it? Yeah, very sad. I think Arsenal are the best team in the first division currently, and I think Leeds United will win the first division. I think uh, Manchester United have blown it. What do you feel has happened to United in the last couple of weeks? Nerves and bottle, and the absence of Robson. I think he's such a man in that club, you know, of the current club, you know, along with the, the legends of the past, but I think Robson makes that team play, calms them down, if you like, and his uh, absence, I think, will prove very costly for them. Editor Eve Pollard had the idea of weekly celebrity reports that allowed famous supporters to write about their club, confirming these days it's fashionable to be a football fan. I think it's a wonderful game, just a wonderful game, because you never know what's going to happen. It's on this little pitch, the rules are very simple, the play is very simple, they just kick the ball to one another, and yet within those very simple things it's extraordinarily complicated. And then you become deeply attached to the team, and you go to bed worrying why Rowcastle's lost form. And I can't believe it. I mean, there's all this going on. I've got a South Bank show to produce, I've got a novel, and I'm worrying why Rowcastle lost form, and then you try to enjoy it. Enjoying the match is one thing. It's very different when you've got to find the recipe for an instant report. Horrendous. I mean, my husband, I must say, did most of it. But I found that if it had been, um, like, a goalless draw, maybe, you know, it might have been easier, but there were three goals and it was just all happening and it was awful. I couldn't be a football reporter for anything. It was really hard. Chelsea fan David Mellor is still buoyant after his party's big win, but it's been tough going at the bridge. Uh, difficult. With the Blues not coming as well through on the football pitch as they did in Westminster, I'm afraid. No, I mean, I think that um, everyone who loves Chelsea knows that on their day they can beat any team in the land, and on another day they could lose to any team, and I mean any team in the land. How committed a supporter are you? Oh, I'm very keen. I mean, I go to almost every home game and quite a number of away games. I mean, I'll be there on Saturday hoping that we'll have a grandstand finish against the Arsenal, who've uh, come into rather good form just lately. So uh, I shall have my fingers crossed and my knees knocking, I'm afraid. Well, you know, well, I must say, Jim, I think 
they were some of the best reports I've ever seen. Well, in the they are. I mean, Chelsea, you've got so many Tory supporters, they're going to privatise the trainer's bucket and sponge, you know. <laughs> but but the, I think those reports that they did probably are some of the best. You're quite right, Ian. <laughs> Much better than, uh, yeah. dare we say this, but, uh, no, you know, but, uh, you, uh, I thought they were excellent. Excellent. Much fairer than normal. No yeah. bias. Uh, superb. And, and they can't <laughs> knock us, saying we finish no. next week. <laughs> how, can, how can we get a bad <laughs> press? <laughs> Don't matter. We finish. Okay, see what you like. That's <laughs> it. Tell them. That's right. All right. Okay. Well, uh, at another lunch, there'll be a few lunches in London this week. The football league had demonstrated <laughs> that they could still expect to command sizable sums of sponsorship income after the arrival of the Premier League. Exclusive news now of a major new deal from Gabriel Clark. Putting the family spirit back into the game has been high on the list of football's priorities in recent times. The first Juicen People Awards this week was clear evidence of that. In the last two years, Juicen have sponsored 73 different family schemes at 49 different clubs. Brentford and Walsall were named top family clubs in Divisions 3 and 4. The godfather of football chairman, Doug Ellis, had plenty to drink to when Aston Villa pipped Leeds to the Division 1 award. But the national title went to second division FA Cup finalist Sunderland. Alec King collected what everyone at Roker Park hopes will be the first of two trophies in the next two weeks. They make things work. I think it's a combination, a special chemistry out there. Uh, the club's part of the community, that's quite clear. It's very important. So the fans have something to do with that. But I think the club has gone out of its way to make sure that it makes itself attractive and, and open to those fans. That innovation includes the Roker Rover, a specially converted double-decker bus which takes Sunderland into the Wearside community. And Juson and the Football League are determined to build on that. They've signed a £600,000 deal for the next two years. This is what the football game is about. Football is a game that depends on repeat purchase. It depends on customers coming back through the turnstiles time and time again. And that, and that maybe you have to offer a little more than just what goes on the pitch, on, on the pitch for 90 minutes during the game. Well, I mean, that is wonderful. Oh, You've done £600,000 put in the kitty. Amazing. And, and Doug Ellis ate and drank most of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, of course. <laughs> good old Doug. But uh, <laughs> it's, it does actually mean that uh, the lesser clubs, so-called, yeah. are going to get some very uh, good juice and sponsorship. Well, the thing is, I don't think it's... Uh, you know, the end of the road as far as the smaller clubs are concerned, are the clubs outside the next year's Premier League because there'll be money there oh, from sponsors, Jim, and I think it'll be a good league. You're quite right, and I think quite the, uh, quite the reverse. I think there's a, a lot of people will be interested in the alternative league, for want of a sure. better word. There's a lot of opportunities there. Ah, Super so, stuff, um, great. Um, right. Now to our goal of the season competition for the little trophy here and we're offering some great prizes if you can match our top three goals in order of merit. We're giving away three day trips for two to an England match during European Championships as a top prize with the FA's official carrier, the Travel Management Group. We also have a pair of tickets to the European Cup final between Barcelona and Sampdoria at Wembley Stadium all expenses paid. We have four sets of the official Football League video series including Race for the Championship, Saves Galore and Goals Galore, all from Fox Video. And finally, we have six copies of the only official record of Rangers Championship victory on video entitled Four in a Row. Now what you have to do is select the top three of our seven goals of the season in order of merit. And there are seven this week because we've added Anders Limpar's tremendous effort against Liverpool last Monday to our final selection. Now here are the seven goals to choose from. The sunshine and green pitches of August, a new season and an early contender for the sort of goal which lives in the memory. A soft touch and Palmer able to feed Hurst who brings it onto his left foot. What a start to the season for David Hurst. And what a start for Wednesday. Great goals can be spectacular. The finishing touch in a skilful build-up or simply a moment of individual brilliance. Dwight York of Aston Villa can certainly lay claim to the solo goal of the season. You simply can't legislate for talent like this.
for quantity, there's no one to touch Gary Lineker. And for quality, Goal C must be one of the best by the Footballer of the Year. Spurs are clearly going to see plenty of the ball tonight. Lineker, Allen, Samways, Van den Haar. That's Nietzsche, that. Allen on towards Gary Lineker. What a superb goal! Oh, that's broken the ice. If Leeds United win the championship, Lee Chapman's contribution will have been enormous. This effort, a classic of simplicity. Dorigo. That's good running and a fine ball. Speed. First time towards Chapman. Oh, a magnificent goal by Lee Chapman. Our fifth contender combines ice cool confidence and exquisite skill. Arsenal's Paul Merson needed just one look and one chip to provide us with this memorable goal. Frenchman Eric Cantona has already become a folk hero to fans of Leeds United, and no wonder. Every kid on every park dreams of scoring a goal like this, and there's many a first division player who sat back in disbelief at that moment of magic. Arsenal bought Anders Limpa for his ability to do the unexpected and the unusual, and here's why. Our final contender just had to force its way in as a late entry. How many players could do this in a practice match, never mind the first division? Right, now put the letters of your top three goals in order, and if your choice matches ours, you could be a winner. And you can also phone your choice through on this number. 0891 That's 0891 And the calls will cost you 36p, cheap rate, 48p at other times. Or you can enter by post to IGV Goal of the Season competition, London Weekend Television, London SE 996YW. Now, all the winners' names will be revealed on next week's show. And how we are going to sort that out, well, I do not know. we obviously haven't made our minds up yet, <laughs> folks, and I can assure you we haven't, because we actually beg to differ on this, on two or three of the goals. So We need to pull it, somebody else in. Yeah, we'll get, our, lady we'll get our producer in, the tea <laughs> no. lady. We'll get <laughs> the workers from the uh, working outside the building, and we'll get them all involved, Ian. Well, it's going to be a very difficult one, but, uh, you know... Send the entries in anyway, and we'll see how we go next week. Mm. Well, finally today, even though that the European Championships are beckoning, the European qualifying matches for the 1994 World Cup finals kicked off this week with games in Spain and Belgium. Here's Jim Rosenthal. Wales can be encouraged by Belgium's failure to get a hatful against Cyprus. Just one goal for Mark Vilmots, the standard age striker. The Belgians booed off. Wales start their Group 4 qualifiers in Romania next month. And now the first action from that group of seven. Spain are off to a flyer with just a couple of minutes gone. A nice rebound for Michel. A really dodgy penalty decision, though, for their second goal. Baquero upended by Strakosha. Michel once again from the penalty, and that's his 21st goal for his country. Late on, Fernando Hierro gets the third. Hierro used to be a central defender. He's now second top scorer in the Spanish league, playing in midfield. Northern Ireland are at home to Lithuania on Tuesday. The Republic play Albania next month. Well, the World Cup on its way, Jim. England have a friendly next week against the CIS. It's this, yeah. Uh, no, he's, t he's selected 50 players, Graham Taylor. He, he, must, he must win I, with that. I thought 50 I was backing him with a chance. I thought he was <laughs> selecting players at 50. I put my name down. But, I mean, 50, 50 players is a joke. Oh, I mean, I think we'll get a win. I yeah. oh, fancy us out there. Scotland, really Scotland do. don't have a game because Andy Roxburgh thought, well, you know, you can't get the players at this time of the year. Yeah. There's no point in getting involved in all that. So we've uh, yeah. given it a, a I bye. wonder whether we fix this game up <laughs> when they were the Union of Soviet <laughs> Social Republics and live to regret it. We'll never know. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Yeah. Anyway, before we go, a reminder mm. to look out for tonight's live boxing on ITV at 10:30. When the WBO Super Middleweight Champion Chris Eubank takes on John Jarvis of the USA at the GMX Centre in Manchester. And also don't forget the match from 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Well, that's it. We shall see you next Saturday. We will Bye -bye. indeed.